What's up everyone, my name is Joris. The S&P 500 index has passed 3,500 points recently and the Dow Jones has passed 29,000 points. The American indexes are on an all-time high, all while the Asian and European markets struggle to keep up. Should you sell everything now and turn your back into the stock market or should you seize this opportunity and invest now? By the end of this video, you'll know why the markets are where they are and what you should do at the moment. We will look at different investment strategies that will depend on your risk aversity and as well as your age. We will debunk the myth of the holy grail of financial independence and the 4% withdrawal rate that is very popular amongst the FIRE enthusiasts. After a steep rise from the bottom of the stock market at the end of March, the stock market sentiment is negative again. Investors expect a dip in the market any time now and they are very afraid, but still they do not want to step out of the market since the market keeps on rising. The VIX index, an index indicating the volatility of the markets, has been dropping since March, but it is still very high compared to its normal levels. If investors are nervous, the VIX index will rise. This means that intraday movements of individual stocks can fluctuate quite a lot. On a more macroeconomic scale, there's also a lot of tension lately. Trade wars between the United States and China, the global pandemic, Brexit, the mini oil crisis and so on. Many other events cause stress to the investors. But how come the stocks can keep going up, you might ask? Well, on the one hand, we have our global pandemic, which forces our daily lives to a standstill. This results in high layoff waves and the loss of purchasing power all around the globe. A normal consequence would be that there is a huge dip in the, in the stock market. And we did see this in March. The markets dipped over 40%, fueled by the panic of the investors. But when we got past the bottom, people started to realize that 40% dip in the market is uncalled for. The pandemic will have its effect on the economy and the stock market, since companies will sell a lot less and have more costs, but this is only a temporary effect. From the moment they realized this, prices started to go up again, fueled by the support of the central banks by printing money and putting it back into the economy. We also saw how tech companies have had crazy stock returns this year, People were forced to stay at home or work from home, resulting in huge sales for these companies. Fueled by the money of the central banks, they were able to grow exponentially the last few months. Other companies, especially the manufacturing companies, were not so lucky. Having to force their employees to stay at home, their output was reduced greatly, resulting in profit losses and mass layoffs. The tech companies rose and the other sectors lagged behind and as a result the tech carries the American stock indexes at the moment with the tech sector representing over 25% of the S&P 500. So we can safely say that the crazy recovery of the major indexes is the result of the huge growth of the tech sector. Since it becomes apparent that the global pandemic is not gone yet, there might even come a second wave, investors are getting a bit scared again. But still, since the central banks are supporting the economy the, and the quarterly company results are not as bad as expected, we will keep on dancing while the music plays. Now, what should you do in times like these? As you might know, I'm an investment banker. I help individual clients as well as their families in their investments, both in the stock and bond market, as well as real estate and other investments. Working with all sorts of people can prove to be quite difficult at times. Some people are very risk aversive, while others take risk head on. Some fear a total loss of their investment the second bad news comes out, and others don't even follow the news, they almost forget they have invested in the first place. There are a few very important variables that you should take into account when deciding on how and when you should invest in the stock market. For 95% of people, an investment in a fund or a tracker is perfect. Um, in these products you save in a rather safe way and you do not have to invest too much time looking through the financial books of the companies you are investing in. Thus you are investing your money and you're following the market but not spending any time following the market. Only a handful of investors want to invest their time to pick individual stocks. They are free to do so, of course, and they might even get great returns. 
but even the professionals do not succeed in beating the market year after year in the long run. The best results are achieved by investing in the general market and not watching the news or your daily returns. After a few years, you'll be very happy you did. It is also very important to have a well-balanced portfolio. If you are very risk averse, if you're scared of movements in your portfolio, you will have to make your portfolio more defensive. By adding more bonds into your portfolio, it provides some sort of solid foundation to your invested money. The stock part of your portfolio will then generate the return in the long term. The more stocks you have in your portfolio, the more potential return you'll be getting, but also the more risk you'll be taking. As said before, some people fear negative movements in the portfolio. They should invest more in bonds than they are in stocks. The more aggressive investors can add more stocks to their portfolio and even go to 100% stocks or 100% equity as it is often referred. I have had clients that wanted a certain return on their portfolio which was impossible to get with the percentage of, uh, of stocks they had in their portfolio. It's simply impossible to achieve a 10% yearly return if you do not allow your portfolio to go down by 5 or 10% during the year. These people were very risk averse, but they wanted a big return. And that's very hard to combine. It is also very important to think about your ideal asset allocation. And it's even more important to accept or to be able to accept the result of your investment. Another important factor is your age. Your age depends on where you are on your financial investment journey. If you are young, you'll probably still be working and you are building up your investment portfolio by adding every month or every year more invested money. Moreover, you'll have a lot of years to go before you actually need the, mon the money you have saved up. It is often advised to have your maximum percentage in stocks as far as your risk aversion allows you to, of course. The best approach here is to invest a certain amount every month or every few months if your costs are too high to, to start. If the markets are down, you're buying in at a lower price. If the markets are up, you're buying at a higher price. In the, in the long run, you'll have an average price and there you will have your profit. And since your investment journey will take several years, you'll be just fine. On the other hand, it is a bit harder if you are older and maybe at the end of your investment journey. If you are close to your retirement age and you will need your money invested to live off of when you are actually retired. It will be, it will be harder to accept a big drop in your net worth or your portfolio. So it is often advised to start switching your stocks to bonds or other less volatile investments when you are at the end of your financial journey and you'll need the monthly income. This will make sure that your monthly income, your monthly payout will be safe. A sudden market crash can often pose a big problem for the enthusiasts of the FIRE movement. Their goal is to retire on a 4% withdrawal of their invested savings. If they want to retire with 25 times their yearly expenses invested and just that year or the year before the market dips by 40%, their complete retirement plan is thrown out of the window. And even if it takes the markets a few years to recover from a crash, taking out those 4% every year will only lengthen the time the markets will have to recover or your portfolio will have to recover. Oftentimes I see the fire enthusiasts saying, well, we will live more frugally again then, or we will find a job for a while. I do not believe that you are getting a job again after being retired of four, 10 years whether you are 45 or you're 70, it just won't be that easy or you won't even find the motivation to start working again. Personally, I think that the 25 times your yearly expenses will be too low and I will be aiming higher. So let's conclude. What should you do at this moment? If you are at the end of your investment journey or if you are looking to buy a house or another big expense in the next few months or years, start changing your portfolio now to a safer one so you are less susceptible to the market movements in the short term. If you're young and you're able to save and invest every month, continue to do so. And if there is a major market dip in the next few months or years, use that opportunity to invest just that little bit more during the dip. But whatever you do, 
make sure you are comfortable with what you do. If you are afraid to invest, get some outside help, preferably from someone who is not trying to sell you something. Or just stay out of the market altogether. Investing is a personal decision, it's not for everyone. So no one can make the decisions on the investments for you. Others can give you advice, but you are the final sole responsible at the end. So do not invest because such and such told you to do so. The rewards of investing can be great, but the risk is substantial. So you really have to make sure you feel comfortable with your decisions. I cannot stress this enough. If you want more information about investing or where to invest and how much you should invest, I'll put some links in down in the description for you to check out. And if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for more financial tips in the future. Knowledge is the number one hurdle. So together we will try to improve that knowledge and help us start our financial journey. I thank you for watching and I welcome you in the next video.